sold more than 100 million records. They are one of the most popular bands in history. But now, one of their founding members is exposing some of the dark truths behind the smiles. It's a story of drugs, infidelity and even murder. Their songs are instantly recognisable and timeless. Formed in California in 1961, the Beach Boys comprised three brothers, Carl, Dennis and Brian Wilson, their cousin Mike Love and their friend Al Jardine. They scored an incredible 55 top 100 singles, four of them number one. Now at 75, Mike is telling the story behind the music in his new autobiography, Good Vibrations, My Life as a Beach Boy. In it, he details Brian's drug addiction and panic attacks, as well as his tumultuous relationship with Dennis, who had an affair with Mike's wife at the time. The most chilling of all is Mike's memories of Charles Manson, the notorious cult leader who befriended Dennis and the Beach Boys before his killing spree in 1969. Mike Love joins us now from San Diego. Mike, good to see you again. As you know, I'm a big Beach Boys fan, love the book. But, wow, the Charles Manson story is really incredible. What are your memories of him? Well, the kind of creepy memories. Yeah. Uh, I was in... <laughs> we were invited to dinner. Bruce Johnson and I were invited to dinner one night by Dennis to, to join him at his home, and, and we were the only people with clothing on. Everybody else was completely stark naked I mean <laughs> so uh, and after dinner uh, they all adjourned to a den where Charlie turned on a strobe light and passed out acid which I declined and uh, it was a warm warm night so I went uh, I was on my way back to the studio at Brian's place and and went to take a shower because I wasn't into the group thing that was going on so uh, and somebody followed me into the shower and then Charlie uh, came, came to say, uh, you can't do that. And I said, pardon me? He says, you can't leave the group. I said, oh. well, I'm really terribly sorry, Charlie, but we have to get back to the studio to finish up some recording. So Bruce and I left right away, and uh, I was thinking on my way out, uh, Dennis, you really have a strange roommate right now. What wow. was Charles Manson like as a person? I was, to me, I, I didn't have a whole lot of dialogue with him. Uh, Dennis wanted us to join his family, but we declined. Uh, I had learned uh, meditation from Maharishi just prior to meeting Charlie, and, and I was doing, doing well with my meditation, and so I didn't really need Charlie to advise me on life. So, uh, uh, but he was very, very creepy and uh, obviously manipulative and all that. But uh, I didn't really know that he was quite that evil until some time later. Oh, so, so could you see him change, if you like, and become evil? Because one of his followers babysat your two kids, didn't she? Yes, yes, that's true. Um, my, unfortunately, my wife Suzanne and I split up, and she uh, had an affair with my cousin Dennis. And during that period of time that Dennis was living with Charlie, uh, had one of the girls babysit uh, our, our little children. So that, that freaked me out, and I was, mm. I was really unsettled by that, of Especially course. Especially because you'd met him. Uh, in your book, you claim Dennis witnessed Manson murder someone. Now, the police have said they've never heard about this. What did you hear? That's, be that's probably because Dennis never spoke of it. He did to me, however... We were at a studio one, one time, uh, and he had been out to the ranch, the Spawn Ranch, and, and, uh, and I asked him, Dennis, why are you so uptight? You know, he was, seemed to be very nervous. And then he told me that he'd seen Charlie take an M16 rifle and blow a black cat, meaning a black person, in, in half and stuff him down a well at Spawn Ranch. That, that never came out because Dennis would not talk to the authorities. He wouldn't talk to anybody about his whole situation with Charlie. He just went silent. 
just amazing stuff in the book. It's not all dark, I've got to say, because, you know, they're, they're all the good stories of, uh, of the Beach Boys and your rise to fame, uh, global rise to fame. How did you handle that fame? Well, I, 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 was, I was thrilled by it, of course. You know, prior to that, I was a sheet metal apprentice uh, at my father and my grandfather's factory. So I was, uh, but my mom set the stage for all the good things to come by her love of music. And so there's never been a time in my life when there wasn't music. So it was just a, a family hobby, creating yeah. those harmonies together that led to, uh, you know, my cousin Brian and I sitting down and crafting some songs, which, which uh, fortunately uh, became big hits. Yeah, and you've, you've had a sort of rocky relationship with Brian, haven't you? You've, you've sued him a few times and he sued you. No, what happened was my uncle Murray administered our publishing and he never credited me for with so many of the songs that I co-wrote with Brian, like Help Me Rhonda, like California Girls, like I Get Around. Mm -hmm. Those are three out of several songs that I was not credited on. So the only uh -huh. way I had could get credit was to go to court. And yep. be, the reason being that Brian was in a conservatorship, which means even though he wanted to rectify that omission, he was unable to because an attorney took care of all his business yeah. dealings. Are we you, saw so, that in the so movie. So that was unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still bitter yeah. about that or are you sort of over that? No, no, no. I mean, I am uh, way more grateful than I am bitter about anything. Believe me. I mean, to have been able to create such songs that are loved by so many people and every night that we go out on stage and we did 172 concerts last year and to see the happiness created and yeah. to know that I played a big part in the creating of those songs and I'm able to sing them still to this day and have them appreciated. That's pretty awesome. That's yep. a miraculous kind of beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. The sound of a generation. Yep. Mike, good to see you again. It's great to see you and I good hope up. to see you in February. We're working on it. Oh, good. Okay. Excellent. You yeah. have lived some kind of life. Thank yep. you very much <laughs> for joining us today. Good day. Mike Love's book, Good Vibrations, My Life as a Beach Boy, is out it's tomorrow. And Brian Wilson mm. has his autobiography coming out next month. Oh. So it's got to be interesting comparing the, yeah, the, uh, stories. the two stories. Because as yeah. I said, they've had a few fights over yeah. the years. All right, let's move on. It's been lovely.